action. Outstanding. All right, guys. Today, we're going to talk about fluid power, obviously. This is fluid power class. We've done hydraulics, and now we're going into pneumatics. And pneumatics is uh, just as powerful as hydraulics, but in different ways. Obviously, it's not going to you uh, have the same kind of load capabilities, but it can do some pretty interesting things and some pretty entertaining things. All right? So one of the entertaining things that pneumatics can do is this little guy right here. Okay? This is what we call a pneumatic spud gun. So right now inside this chamber, I have pressurized air. It's potential energy. That's energy just waiting to happen. How do I convert potential energy into kinetic energy? I give it a, I give it a twist. So here we go. Are we ready? You might want to duck. I have compressed air in the chamber. This is potential energy, and we are going to turn into kinetic energy by giving a crank. All right? Everybody duck. All right, so pneumatics can be used for many different things. And I have a demonstration here of some of the things pneumatics can be used for. All right? So, for instance, uh, we use pneumatic tools in many different applications. The prime source of energy for this tool is fluid power, air. This is a pneumatic cutter. See what kind of damage we can do with this. So the fluid power, the pneumatic, the compressed air is giving us the power for this cutter. Some other entertaining things that can be used for uh, a pneumatic horn. Pneumatic energy. One of the projects we're going to be working on as we learn about pneumatic energy will be whirligigs. I have several of them here, several different designs. We'll turn on this fan back here and give you a demonstration of what a whirligig is. A whirligig is like a garden sculpture that uses the wind, which is a fluid, which is pneumatic, to provide the power to give motion to these sculptures. So here you see we've got a bird, we have an airplane, we have a submarine, we have a crazed rabbit, we have a mermaid. You're limited only by your imagination. Right here I have a real nice eagle that somebody made. And of course a very popular Canada Goose. So you guys are going to get an opportunity to decide what type of whirligig you are going to make. But let me put out this one caveat. I do not ever want to see another Canada Goose as long as I live. So, I don't want to see Canada Goose, I don't want to see Snow Goose. If you want to do a Mallard Duck, that's fine. If you want to do a Wood Duck, that's fine. Geese, out of the equation. Why? Because usually every class I have about six people who make the same goose. And I'd like to see a little bit of diversity, some things that are different. Let me show you another design. Here we have a four-wheel drive. The problem, and there was a problem with this design, the problem with the design is it was 
too complicated for the student and he wasn't able to complete it. So I have half a truck. Or he should have had another set of wheels. Also, he didn't come up with the best way to try and mount this. This has to be mounted. And what I've uh, used in the past has been three quarter inch dowel rods. But I'm going to show you a video of a whirly gig that will move all the way around in a circle with the wind. Now you see some of these are not spinning quite as well as they ought to. The problem is the direction of the wind. When the, when the fluid, the air, hits it just right, it will spin. When it doesn't hit it quite right, there's a little bit of hesitation. So what I've learned, the trick I've learned in order to get these things to spin with the wind is we're going to insert a lamp post up inside, which is basically, uh, you can find it in any hardware store, it's a little section of lamp post, and it's a small little cylinder, a small little tube that you run electrical wires up through the lamp. We're going to put that on the inside, and instead of mounting it with a three-quarter inch dowel rod, we're going to mount it with a little one-sixteenth of an inch piece of metal um, bar. So what happens is that metal bar moves freely, or I should say the whirly gig moves freely on that bar and will constantly change direction with the wind. And that's the effect we really want. What you are going to be given, each and every one of you, is a piece of 2 inch by 12 inch by 2 feet piece of pine stock. You all need to come up with a pattern. You're going to make your pattern by taking a couple of pieces of paper and taping it together. This happens to be a macaw parrot. You're going to get your pattern drawn out on the board. Now, let me talk about conserving wood. You don't need to put a pattern like this and use up all the wood, you can get that pattern as close to the bottom as possible and you will save all this stock here. In fact, if you have a narrow pattern, I have some narrower boards that we'll use instead of the big thick 12 inch board. This mermaid was actually, if you see, it was wider than the board. How did I accomplish this? I had to take two boards and we had to join them together. I have a tool called a biscuit cutter. And a biscuit looks like a little wooden football. It cuts the grooves in both sides. We glue it, we put the biscuits in, and it holds it tight. If you look carefully, you can see the seam going up. Some parts of this whirly gig are not going to be this thick wood. Like, you take a look at my eagle here. This eagle, the body is thick but the wings are thin. We don't want thick wings. We, have, we want thin wings. Lighter wings will catch the air better. Some parts of the <coughs> whirly gig might be of different shapes and sizes. For instance, this tail right here is a different thickness than the body. The wings are a different thickness. Here's one that a student of mine never completely finished. But, if this thing got finished, it would be an awesome, awesome whirly gig. The tail, it was just a carp, and the tail was going to spin. Now, look at the fin, the dorsal fin. It's the thin wood that we use for the propellers, for the wings. So, if whatever you're creating has thinner pieces, we'll make it out of the thinner material. And all we had to do was cut a channel right down the middle of this thick piece and glue it in place. Uh, all of the pectoral fins were all made out of the same thin material. I had a student do a dolphin. It was incredible. Now a dolphin's tail is not in line with the body, it's perpendicular. 
So we took another piece of wood and we made a tail and we put a channel in here. We put them together. So again, number one, you're only limited by your imagination. Number two, you just need to get a little bit of help. And we can have some pretty incredible uh, creations. So I've got a couple I want to show you up on the screen here just to kind of give you some ideas. Frank, can you go ahead and grab the light back there? Let me start with some videos. I'm going to start with this one. Uh, this is a whirling gig I made. It's a bass. And this is where I used the lamp stem and a piece of 16th inch metal. Now this thing will spin all the way around and it'll turn with the wind. And look at how that tail's turning very, very quickly. I used a lot of different parts in the tail to get it to spin just like that. Here's my good friend Tommy Towers and his wood duck. This was a beautiful, beautiful whirly gate. He really spent some time painting it up nice. Very, very nice. This was a turkey. Now, obviously, <laughs> the, the turkey's body was not going to fit on this piece of wood. We used several pieces of wood to get the shape of the turkey. And this is actually one of my favorite whirly gigs. Um, he could have spent a little more time painting the rest of the body, but this is just, uh, I loved it. It was a great whirly gig. He did, some put, did put some good detail on the wings. This was Kyle Douglas's Oriole. Very nice. He did a good job on this. It worked very, very well. The, the paint scheme on it was beautiful. This was the airplane which I have up front here. Now you might ask, hey, why do I have all these whirly gigs? Well, some people decided to leave them here. Some people actually never got them finished and I finished them. Um, the airplane was made by William Mast and he actually took it home and tried to put it up somewhere and it just wasn't, wasn't working out wherever he wanted to put it up at and it was sitting in his closet and he decided to donate it to the shop. So that's how we still have the uh, uh, airplane. But the airplane was very, very nice. Here we have a frog. This was kind of a, an interesting design. So the frog legs are actually the propellers, and that's what's doing the spinning. These were two of the most interesting whirly gigs I had last year. One is a ninja, and he's got throwing stars, and the throwing stars are what's spinning. And the other one is this cool cat, and the cat's tail is what's doing the spinning. So, uh, again, you're limited only by your imagination. So anything you can think of, we can turn it into a whirly game. Here's Mickey Mouse. So here we've got Mickey Mouse's feet spinning. <laughs> this was a grizzly bear. This was pretty cool. <laughs> he got his he Trevor got his hair cut. He doesn't have long hair anymore. Good. Good job. Thank you, Mr. Job or something. 